All right, good day. This is Michael with Iconesis. We've had a lot of customers inquiring about shooting industrial parts in 360, and today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video uh, showing that process using our medium USB turntable, medium 360 acrylic riser, and one of our LumiPad 360 photography lighting systems. Um, I've connected my camera via USB and I've enabled live view. As you can see, my hand going back and forth in front of the camera, so that's a real-time preview of what our camera sees. Um, I've positioned my object in the center of the turntable. First thing we're going to notice is that the product is a bit out of focus. So we do have full control over adjusting our focal point through mouse clicks. And as you can see, as I make these adjustments, it'll bring the object back into focus. Now we can also zoom in nice and up close and really start to make very fine adjustments to make sure we're going to get everything absolutely crisp. Uh, so that looks pretty good there. The next thing we're going to do, it looks like we're shooting it a little bit underexposed right now. Um, so I'm going to make some adjustments to my camera settings and uh, I will uh, kind of m optimize those for my, uh, for my lighting environment. Um, the other thing I can do is also obviously adjust my white balance. So we have full control over all our camera settings through mouse clicks and that actually looks quite good there. Um, so I will leave those settings. Uh, next step is to enter into the 360 shooting mode and we're going to pre-rotate our turntable. And what we visually want to do is A, ensure our object is spinning in the center of the turntable. B, is pre-crop our subject, meaning it's only going to take a picture of what's inside this area that I define. Um, we have a customer requesting this sample at a perfect square, so when I hold shift and crop, it retains that crop to, its, uh, to a perfect square. Users also have full control to adjust their crop at a specific ratio, such as 8 by 5 or whatever preset is really required. So we're just going to, again, visually ensure that we position our object in the center of the turntable, adjust our crop markers to make sure it's not going to fall outside of the crop area <coughs> as we, uh, we pre-rotate the turntable. And then once it looks good to go, we're going to stop uh, at the area that we wish to be our first angle. So I will say probably about right here. Next what I'm going to do is select the number of frames. I'll shoot 24. Users can shoot up to 72 if required. Then we hit our start button, and that's going to uh, that's going to automate our image capture in a turn stop snap workflow. You can probably hear the camera capturing in the background, and as it captures, it's going to show us the images on our monitor screen inside of the included Shutterstream 360 application to show us some real time feedback. Okay, so we are entering into our last frame. Uh, the entire image capture process took about 1 minute 45 seconds. We're going to see a message pop up saying 360 image capture complete. Uh, next what we can do is select all. That's going to batch select every single one of the images. Uh, you can also inspect them, um, but enter into the editing tool. Um, first thing we're going to do is we have a eyedropper tool and if you watch the RGB just up in the top right, you're going to be able to see that we have shot this instantly on pure white background. Uh, meaning that there's really no post-production required. I might make a small couple edits here just to adjust some colors just a tad using my levels tool and maybe increase my sharpness just a tad. After I make the editing changes what I can actually do is hit apply to all and in a batch process it's going to race through and batch edit that entire set of images. Now that we've completed our editing process, we want to simply output these. We're going to rename our file. I'll just call this file name 123. It's going to batch rename them, uh, meaning that it'll use the master name and then sequentially name them 01 through 24. Users can also choose to resize. For instance, I need all these at 1000 by 1000 for my website. I can choose uh, to batch resize. And you can also choose some resolution adjustments. Uh, also, watermark or directly sent to an FTP. When I hit OK, it's going to start outputting that set of frames directly to whatever folder we had specified. Now that we've completed the output step, we want to go ahead and create a 360 product view. So I've opened up the included 360 view creator application. We'll drag and drop the set of frames 
inside of the application and this is going to quickly create us an interactive 360 product view that we can then put on our own servers and host. So this is the result right here. Users do have full control uh, over customizing buttons, the spin speed, the overall output size, really whatever parameters are required, these can be fully customized. As you can see, these are user interactive and simply to output this, we simply rename our file. So we'll call this uh, 360 industrial part. We will hit save to whatever folder we'd specified. And looks like the output has been completed and then we can go and actually view this 360 product view in a uh, in a web browser just for local viewing again we can host this 360 product view um, if required um, then we can serve it to our website uh, 360 product views can also include deep zoom as well as a lot of other interactive features let us know if you have any questions thank you